My name is April. I'm 25 years old. And no, I've never had a boyfriend. I've never even kissed anyone because I'm so ugly. I carefully hide my ugliness under my hair. But recently, I learned I had an admirer, but he was a pervert. Maybe something worse. Have you ever been stalked? Do you want to know what it's like? Then watch my story. Since birth, I wasn't like other people. Firstly, my dad passed away before I was born. He was a soldier, and when my mother found out she was pregnant, he had already left for service. My dad and I have never even met each other. I only have a photo of him, but it's a good thing that my dad never saw me. He would never have wanted a daughter like me, because I think I'm a real monster. Even the doctors were shocked when I was born. My mum was even offered to abandon me. The doctors painted a picture of the life she would have. Expensive treatment, upset people, and lots of problems in the future. A life worse than that of a prisoner. Not a blessing, but a life sentence. But my mother didn't listen to the doctors and soon regretted it. I didn't go to kindergarten. My mum taught me herself. But major problems started at school. I was teased because of my ugliness, but I wasn't a whiner and didn't want to show anyone how hurt I really was. I fought everyone who offended me, chopping them like Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. Because of this, I was constantly being sent to the principal's office. My mum was always called in and would listen silently. They always made me feel guilty, although I was the one who suffered the most. No one would listen to me, although they all had ears, unlike me. Yup, you heard right. I have no ears. I was born without them. Do you see how they look? Well, how are you feeling now? Disgusting? It looks like they were cut off with a large pair of scissors and then hurriedly sewn up. If only. This is actually a disease called microtia. It's congenital and is not treatable. I have the hardest degree and the total absence of ear shells. But oddly enough, I can hear everything well, especially other people's insults. And I heard a lot of them. Boys, especially, like to come up with my nicknames, Stumphead or Pan Girl. As you can imagine, a girl like that has never been looked at. I had never been on a date or kissed, not even a single Valentine's card, in 25 years. Although I have a beautiful figure, as I play a lot of sports, guys even whistle me when I pass them from behind. I look pretty good. But when I turn, all the guys scatter. No one wants to be with an ugly girl like me. I understand them. I can't look at myself without crying. But once, I had a secret admirer. This is a very strange story, and even now, I shake when I think about it. Due to my appearance, I couldn't get a job for a long time. I was offered to collect envelopes or receive calls, but at home, away from other people. I didn't want to be a hermit sitting alone. But I'd always dreamed of working amongst other people, chatting, and maybe even falling in love someday. I might meet a guy who didn't care about my appearance, or at least my ears. Have you met a guy like this? I'd never. That was until it happened. I went to 52 interviews, but because of my ugliness, potential employers always refused. I begged them to hire me, but everyone remained indifferent. That was, until a couple of years ago, I met Bill. He was the manager of a cafe and also my mum's classmate. He finally took me on, working alongside people in his cafe. But one of my colleagues turned out to be not who he was posing as. Bill, my boss, asked me to grow my hair out so that I could hide my defect from customers. I did everything I could trying to please him. Bill treated me kindly, even fatherly. He liked that I was so quiet and conscientious, as no one else in the team was. Now I'm going to introduce you closer. Try and guess which one is crazy. So, we're betting. Way to Johnny. Weird scandal type. He was always quarrelling with the manager because he brought his bulldog into the cafe. He said they were a team, like Bonnie and Clyde. But I think he just wanted to piss Bill off. And he's not the only one. Next is Sarah, the washer. Sarah would never wash the lipstick off our glasses. Visitors were constantly displeased and made scandals. Bill had to deal with it personally, leading to regular arguments between them that could last up to two hours. But the strangest was Shelley, the accountant. Every day she would come in and begin to cry over her desk. She would raise her hands to the sky and would read prayers aloud. The papers are wrong. The dust is wrong. The stain is on the table. 
Crazy, right? She had a crazy son too, Clive. He would come into work with his mum and just growl. Even Bill was a little afraid of this pair, but I was quiet, and that was soon taken advantage of. I didn't have many friends in the cafe, but I had someone to talk to. I suffered in silence because I had a dream. I was hoping that someday medicine would move forward so doctors could make me new ears. I was saving money and asking Bill for extra work. I wanted to collect $20,000 and the director made advances. I often stayed at the cafe in the evenings. I did all the cooking for tomorrow and one day something happened. I was changing my clothes as usual, slowly taking off my robe when suddenly, you know that feeling when someone was staring at you and you feel it all over your body? Someone was watching me. I was sure of it. I was standing there in my underwear and turned around, trying to find out who was watching, but nobody was there. I began to look around desperately, at the ceiling, the floor, everywhere, and that's when I noticed the hole in the wall. It was just under the ceiling. I knew that on the other side of the wall, there was a small utility room. Someone must have been watching me from there. I was trying to see who was hiding behind the hole in the wall, but it was dark. I couldn't see anything, but I could hear very well. There was heavy breathing and sometimes squeaks. What could this man do right now? I had different suspicions. What do you think? Overall, I didn't know what to do. How should I react to this? I quickly changed and thought about what had happened all the way home. I was scared, but at the same time, pleased. Someone was watching me. Someone was interested in me. This had never happened to me before and I decided, for now, to do nothing. To leave everything as it is. Do you think I'm weird? Every night after an evening shift, the same story repeated itself. I would hear intermittent breathing and felt the look of a secret observer. I began to change my clothes more and more slowly so my fan could enjoy the view. I started to get a buzz out of it. For the first time in my life, I felt beautiful and desirable. I was the fruit that someone wanted to taste. I started to dance whilst changing, stripping my clothes off slower and slower. The breathing behind the hole in the wall grew heavier. My fan clearly liked it. But who was this man? The waiter? Chef's assistant? One of the delivery guys? The chef? Every night, I imagined him coming out of hiding, and my show goes on with him. On the one hand, I really wanted to, and on the other, I was afraid. In my dreams, it was a young and hot guy. I was so looking forward to finally meeting and telling each other what we had felt for so long. How stupid I was. I've decided I'm going to provoke him, to stir him up and summon him from the shelter. I stroked my hair, turned up the music and danced more daring. I felt that he liked it. He was silent but breathed heavier than ever. I felt his hot, quick breath on me and I couldn't wait any longer. I decided to call on my fan and I asked him to come down to meet me. His answer? Silence and no movement. I was afraid that he got scared of my perseverance. What if he never came again? This was my last chance to feel loved. So I boldly called out to him again, but still nothing. He was silent and even his breathing had stopped. It was all too much. I couldn't stand it. So I rushed into the utility room. I remember every step in that little black room. I thought I'd see my love there, but only bitter disappointment awaited me. I opened the door and turned on the light. Near the hole in the wall, I finally saw him, Johnny's bulldog. Can you imagine? The dog had been watching me the entire time. It was his breathing I was hearing, which I mistook as a guy's passionate breathing. I felt like an absolute idiot. I had never felt such crushing disappointment in my life before. And I hated myself for being so stupid. How could I think that anyone could like someone ugly like me? It turned out that Johnny, the weird waiter, secretly locked his dog in the utility room for the night and went out to parties with his friends. I hated him. It's a good thing that dogs don't know how to speak. Imagine my embarrassment. I decided to take revenge on Johnny for the humiliation he had put me through. I told Bill everything and he finally fired Johnny. I felt a little better afterward, but not for long because no one likes me anyway. No one will ever love me either. The hope is for doctors and medicine of the future. Maybe one day they'll fix it up and help me. I don't think so. I'm an adult and I know it's just a fiction. 
I keep working at the cafe and I'm still alone. Maybe one of you feels the same way I do. Absolute loneliness that you can't hide from. I'd be happy if someone liked my story and wanted to be friends with me or even date. Write me a comment. I'll be looking forward to it. Click like and subscribe to the channel.